Lindsay from My Crafty Plants. Welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, welcome. Happy Planmas, and today is the day. It is time to unveil my 2024 planner lineup. I am so excited to share this with you. I had such an amazing planner year in 2023. I really feel like I built out a system that I absolutely love. So my 2024 lineup is going to be pretty similar to my 2023 lineup, but with some adjustments that I've made throughout the year along the way and some new stuff to try out for 2024, because of course we have to try out some new things in the new year. I also have some planner and planner lineup related questions from all of you. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted questions. I can't wait to dig into these. I think they're going to be so helpful for you while you are working on setting your planner lineup or just to help you get super excited for planning in 2024. And that is what I am here for. That is what I am all about. I got so many questions on that first plan this video where I asked for questions. I have divided those up into different categories. We're going to be answering some today, but if I don't answer your question today, don't worry. I'm going to have a few more videos still coming in plan this where I'm going to answer more of those questions. I just kind of sectioned them off into categories. Today we're going to be answering some of the ones that are really specific to how to choose a planner, what kind of planners work well in certain situations, how I craft my planner lineup, things of that nature. So I'm going to start face front and I'm going to introduce you to a couple of my key planners and also how my planner lineup system works because it is a system. It is so much more than a stack. While I'm doing that, I will answer a few of these questions. Then I'm going to flip the camera to the tabletop view so that we can take a look at some of these planners in more detail. And I'll answer some more of your questions about how to choose a planner at that time. So my planner system has four main categories or components. This is how I think about my planner system now, how it functions right now and how I've thought about it for 2024. This did evolve over the past year. It is not the same framework that I had in my planner lineup video from 2023, but it's very much how I think about planning right now. The first category is my main core planners, and I have two planners in this category. If you are a regular viewer of my channel, neither of these will come as any surprise. The two core planners that I use that I think of as the foundation for my entire planning system of my entire life are, of course, the Moxie Life Quarterly Companion Notebooks, which I use for goal setting, and the Erin Codron Family Organizer, which is my main monthly planner. Together, these two form the core of everything else, and these are the two that are really just so essential and foundational to my entire system. Everything else builds on top of these. These are the two that I absolutely cannot live without. We're going to take a quick flip through my two core planners. First, we'll start with my Moxie Life and then we'll do the family organizer. I have videos with all of these in a great more detail. If you cannot find them, just let me know and I will send you a link if there's something you want to see more in depth. This is the Moxie Life Quarterly Companion Notebooks. This is my third year using the Moxie Life Planner and the third year specifically using the Companion Notebooks. I've got it stored in one of their new folios from this year. They offer these in a bunch of different colors. I love this like bright pink one. This is the raspberry. And then the way the quarterly companion notebooks are is you get four quarterly companion notebooks plus an annual goal setting notebook. So the annual goal setting notebook will be where I get started for the beginning of the year when I work on my goal setting process, which I'm kicking off this week. It's a very slim pinstripe booklet. Companion notebooks are undated. They do sell dated planners, however, and you get just all the steps to walk through the their, their goal setting process, which which begins with some reflections and a life uh, a life compass assessment in the Moxie Life system you set goals in eight different categories the ca the categories are color coded they also sell markers that match the color coding categories which I will be using here is the compass assessment and one amazingly wonderful thing about the Moxie Life system is even if you don't want to purchase one of their planners, if you'd like to test out their goal setting system, they offer every single component of their goal setting system, all of the pre-work pages, all of the assessment, even the pages to write down your intentions and your annual goals for the year. All of that is available on their website as a free printable. If you want to try goal setting, if you want to try out this system and Moxie, and a Moxie Life Planner is not in your budget for this year, you can access this whole thing online for free. It's something I really appreciate about Moxie Life and the and how inclusive the brand tries to be. So I definitely encourage you to check that out. I also like to print out extras of certain pages. That way I can test things out before I put pen to page in the actual planner. Once you finish with all of the pre-work, you set your annual goals. Then each month you break that down into monthly goals and weekly actions. In this little first pinstripe booklet is all of the stuff you need to set your annual goals. 
So I will be working through these pages very, very soon and you will see the, the video of that. And then once that is done, you keep this throughout the year, refer back to it. I typically look, check in with my annual goals when I'm setting my monthly goals for the month ahead. Then you get through four companion notebooks. I will be starting with this one, which says just begin again and again, one of my favorite maxisms. All of these books have a different color cover. There were two colorways offered this year and they have a different saying on them. This one says your only limit is your mind good things take time, and then trust the timing of your life. But other than that, the pages on the inside of this are completely identical for all four of the quarterly books. And again, they are undated. So you get a monthly calendar, which I typically do not use, space for your monthly goals, and then five weeks of weekly actions because this is an undated planner, making sure you have enough space for every week of the year. So I will number this week up at the top, put the date and then set, then break down my monthly goals into the eight different categories of weekly actions. And that's usually how I start my weekly planning routine. When you get to the end of the month, there is a, there is a monthly reflections page, a piece of line note paper, and then you roll right into the next month. I've got some sticky notes stuck on that one because I was testing something, but in general, that is the way that this works. At the very end, when you get to the end of your three months, because it is quarterly, after your monthly reflections page, there is another space to mark your quarterly assessment. There is not another set of questions. Some people do take those questions again, but Sierra, who is the founder of Moxie Life, has actually said that you don't need to take do the full questions, the full assessment every quarter. It is okay to give yourself a subjective score for the past three months, and that is typically what I do. I find the life assessment in the annual goals notebook super incredibly helpful, but diminishing returns the more times I complete it throughout the year. Then you have some blank lined notes pages here. I like to use these pages for a goals refresh, and then it's time to roll into your next quarterly companion notebook. So that is the Moxie Life Goals Planner. I've got a ton of videos in here. Check out my goal setting playlist if you want to see plan with me's in here, and I've also got a way more in-depth overviews of this planner and other planners in the Moxie Life. I was on the Moxie Life Review Crew team this, again this year. My other core planner is, of course, the Erin Codron Family Organizer. I accidentally bought one this year with a permanent cover, and I love this cover. That's why I picked this one, but I didn't realize it was permanent, and it has gold foil, and I did upgrade this coil to be rose gold, so I think I'm going to remove this cover. Haven't done it yet. Still debating it. This planner is also upside down, and this planner was available in two colorways this year. The color way options on the family organizer are typically not the same as the ones offered on the current life planner and this planner was available in color blends and color blends neutral I have the color blends neutral there are no pre set up pages you don't get that a goal is a dream with a plan page in here it just jumps right in you've got a plain piece of vellum family organizer book one line notes piece of paper and then you roll right into January so you've got your tab here then you get a monthly calendar, this set of page, which I call the dashboard page, which has a recurring schedule, two line boxes, a blank box, a to-do listing section, a section here that's lined that says family goals, habit tracking, task tracking, this is the only part of the planner that I don't really understand. I use this space differently depending on what I'm feeling for the month because this is a weekly habit tracker or task tracker in a monthly planner and I don't think that that makes sense, but that is what's in there so we kind of work around that space. I also always typically do a setup that matches the color scheme because the color scheme on this page in particular is very difficult to cover. The rest of it you would be able to easily cover, but this page is very is typically very difficult to cover. Just the there's a lot of color on this page. Then the next page here, you have this kind of kid zone. We've got a page here that says school, dates to remember, memories and milestones. We're flying through this. If you want to see more of how I customize these pages to create more functional space and how I use each of these pages, definitely check out one of my plan with me's in here. I have a playlist for that as well. And stay tuned because I will be setting this planner up for January. On this page, we've got extracurriculars, more milestones and achievements, and memories. I find this planner very customizable because a lot of the spaces just have like headings and you can mix things up. I typically make this page all functional stuff and this page all memory keeping and journaling. Then you get a double spread of blank line notes pages. So we have four individual notes sheets. And again, I typically split that. I will do one set of functional space and one set of memory keeping. And in the past year, I've done a lot of photo journaling spreads on the blank line spaces. So again, this planner is highly customizable. And for me, I use this for every area of life, not just family, not just family stuff. And then on the back here, we've got 
this guided journaling page, which I love this page so much. And this is one of the things that has inspired me to try and bring more guided journals into my into my planner lineup for this year. It just says like favorites this month, funniest thing said, best memory from this month, and special moments I'll remember forever. And I've just had a really fun time like recording that throughout the past year and looking forward to keeping up with that for next year. And then this page, which says memories or more memories or milestones. And I usually do a line a day memory keeper in here, which is basically I just write one thing down for each day. And that's it. Then you kind of roll into February. If you want to see all of the all of the colors and pages in here, you can check out my Erin Cardron Black Friday haul and stay tuned because I will be sharing more of this planner. The second category in my planning system is my life area specific planners. So these are planners that serve a very specific and narrow focus. The way that this has evolved is basically when something in my life has outgrown the rest of my planner system, when something is starting to take up too much space in my main planner, in my family organizer, I decided that it needed its own planner. And right now is the Laurel Denise planner, which I use for content planning. Basically, last year, my content planning started to just take over too much space in my other planners, and I felt like it was so disorganized that it just really needed its own space. The Laurel Denise planner is amazing for content planning. I know so many other content creators, both in the planner community and outside of the planner community, that also use this for content planning. I have been using this for about six months. Already, I had an un dated one last year. I'm switching to a dated and I'm switching to the horizontal layout for this year. We'll take a closer look at that as well. Also in this category, although not planner, I do use a monthly meal planning calendar. This is what the blank one looks like. And I kind of put this in the same category as that Laurel Denise planner. This this actually lives in my kitchen. It sticks right to my fridge. The calendar itself is from MC Squares and I set this up at the beginning of every month. And then I do weekly meal planning, not monthly meal planning, but I keep it all on a monthly calendar, which is super, super helpful to my meal planning process. So I also think of that as a life area specific planner, even though it's not technically a planner, it is, it's just a calendar that sticks to my fridge. But in the context of how I think about planning and my planner system, I would also put that in that category. And there's potentially other planners as my life changes and evolves and grows that things that may outgrow my current system that will that would go into this category. So let's take a quick look at my content planner, the Laurel Denise planner as well. Again, this is the horizontal dated version for 2024. If you want to see more of this and see how it compares to the undated, undated version and talk through some of the options, you can check out my full unboxing and review of this planner. But you do get some pre-work pages here. I haven't decided what or how I'm going to use these and then it kind of flips right in to your planner and I've got you super zoomed out so you can see what the the main feature of this planner is that you can see a lot of things at once now this planner is quite large it enables you to see your monthly calendar your weekly spread and then dashboard space all at once then this works like a Dutch door layout if you are familiar with that bullet journaling concept you can flip through your weekly pages and you can still see that dashboard space and the monthly calendar when you get to the back this actually has a habit tracker on the back now. This used to be more dot grid space. And then you have more hidden dot grid space that was behind those weekly spreads. And then again, you have the full dashboard base. The calendar page and the dashboard page are actually on like a thin card stock. So it's really thick paper. Use whatever markers you want. And then the paper in the middle is 120 GSM papers. This paper does hold up really well to pens and markers and different things like that. You can really get very creative in here. I love the dashboard space in here. I am such a dashboard person. So I, so this works really well for me. And again, I only use this planner for social media things. This is dated. The months just repeat. There's no cover page or anything like that. It, it does roll kind of right from the dashboard into the next calendar. And then at the back se section here, you've got a little plan ahead space. We can zoom you in there. Plan ahead space, yearly wins and yearly lessons, some graph paper, some doc grid paper, and then on the very back is just like it says, books I'm reading, things I'm listening to, happy moments, uh, and some different prompts here. This back section is actually different from last year. What I really do love in here, and we can take a look at that in a little bit more zoomed in, is all of the spaces and being able to see everything at once. So this is what the monthly calendar looks like. Again, this is the horizontal layout. You do get a vertical sidebar though, which is really cool. 
and then all of that great dashboard space. The third category of my planner system is my fun, functional, and flexible system. My two core planners are mostly monthly planners. That is how I think. But every week I do need to break that down. And throughout this past year, I've used a number of different planners to do that. And I plan to continue on with that in 2024. Last year at the beginning of the year, I really had my daily planner in my core category. Just had the the flexible piece on the weekly. That is not how things turned out. I've used the Erin Codron Daily Duo, which is my favorite daily planner a lot last year, but I actually don't think of this as a core planner anymore. I think of it more as the same way that I think of all of the other weekly planners that I use. There are some weeks where I feel like I need a weekly planner and a daily planner. There are some weeks where I feel like I just need a daily planner. There are some plenty of weeks where I feel like I just need a weekly planner. There are also some weeks where I feel totally fine just using my core planners and a little extra space for to-do listing. It just depends on the week, it depends on the mood I'm in, and it depends on what I have going on. My life does not look the same every week. I have three young children. I also run my own freelance business in addition to having these social media channels. Some weeks are very chaotic and there's lots of appointments and different things going on. And some weeks I'm just home with a random to-do list of all different kinds of things and no set schedule or appointments. Those two weeks are not the same kind of weeks and I don't want to treat them the same in my planner. So for this year, I do have a whole mix of different weekly planners and daily planners. Some are ones that I've used last year. Some are new to this year and I'm really excited to dive into this to, to continue to mix it up. I do expect that I will use the daily duo more than any anything else in this stack but I'm not gonna pressure myself to use any of these every week or every day. I'm just gonna have fun with it, keep it flexible, but keep it functional. Some people do find it really, really hard to switch between different planners. And if that is you, I completely understand. Choose one planner. But for me, I think that this just works really well. One, it allows me to play with different styles, which is really helpful as a planner content creator. It also helps me give advice and inspiration on how to use different planners in different ways while still being functional to my life. And then the fourth and final component of my planner system is actually my journal and memory keeping system. So this is not exactly a planner, but I do think that it feeds into my planner system. I have a few different things in this category. Most of the things in this category are new. The only thing that is returning in this category is actually my Erin Codron Family Organizer, which in addition to being a core planner is also a core part of my memory and journaling keeping system. When I flip you tabletop view, if you've never seen this before, you'll get to see this has some journaling prompts and space for memory pages in it and I absolutely love that. I love having this all together. More than probably anything else, this is such a this is such a snapshot of my life. I will be doing a 2023 flip through of my of my family organizer so you can see all of that. The 2023 version of this is just a perfect summary of my life over the year. And that's really fun and special. I keep all of my planners, but I will definitely be keeping that one. But I have some other new things that I'm going to be bringing into my journaling practice this year. The first category on that is actually like guided journals. So I have a few from Moxie Life and this new Inspired by Erin Codron one, which is a daily gratitude journal. I actually picked this up on Amazon, but I just really love this. I love the Moxie Life, the gratitude journal and the daily intentions. I don't plan to use any of those every day, but I want to bring in more more guided journals, more guided reflections work to my to my journaling this year. And then I have a host of new Archer and Olive notebooks that I will also be using for journaling and different spreads throughout the year. This A5 one is going to be my new swatch book. So if you like my pen swatching or my Simply Gilded swatching, stay tuned. This is where I'm going to keep all of my Simply Gilded swatches for the year and also all of my pen and marker tests throughout the year. I will be transferring over the swatches of my entire pe pen collection into this planner just a little way to have some fun and kick things off. And then for my actual journaling process, I have a B5 Archer and Olive notebook and a new square one. I'm so excited to try the square layout. So I will be using both of these as, as journals. I'm going to be a little bit more intentional with where I put things in the book. The problem that I had last year was I had my journal and swatches all in one place and I never used consistent pages or numbered anything and I literally can't find anything in there. So we're going to be more more intentional with how we set these up. I'm going to set both of these up bullet journal style. That way there's like an index and a numbering system. And in addition to journaling in these, which includes all different kinds of journaling, I want to get, I want to grow my book journaling practice because that's something that has brought me like a lot of joy this year. And I do plan to do that at least for right now in my square book with like some more pages, individual pages for individual books. Not every book that I read, but ones that are really special to me that will be going in here. More picture style spreads, which I've also loved doing this year. 
just really expanding on that practice a lot and then peppered in with that anytime I have some, something that you would think of as a bullet journal collection like a very specific spread like I have a go wild planning spread in my journal from this year anything like that where it's a little more planner side that will also go in one of these books but this year in a much more organized fashion with an index with pages marked so that I can actually find the things that I'm looking for. So before I flip it over tabletop view to show you a few of those planners in more detail, I'm gonna answer a couple of these questions. First, how many planners do I use in total and how many planners do I use daily? The in total question is really hard. I think last year I used probably somewhere around 10 planners, different planners throughout the year, but not all at the same time and not all every day and every week. It, that's really gonna depend and that number is an evolving number. I do receive a lot of these planners as PR packages. While, so while there's a ton of stuff in my in my pile and in my lineup that I purchased myself, there's also a lot of stuff in here that I've received as PRS collaborations with different planner brands, which I am so appreciative of. I love trying out new planners and I love sharing those new planners, but that definitely does change the economics of what we're doing here. If you don't have a planner social media, it's probably not gonna make sense for you to use 10 different planners throughout the year. In terms of what I'm touching daily, I would say I probably touch two to three planners on any given day. My family organizer stays open all of the time on my desk. That is like the main, I'm looking at that calendar, flipping through the dashboards, mostly looking at that calendar and also touching those memory pages, if not every day, almost every day. That is probably the planner that I touch the absolute most. My Moxie Life, my other core planner, I set that up at the beginning of each week. I set my weekly action items, but then I don't bring that planner back out until the following week when I'm getting ready to set new weekly action items. So that planner, while I consider it core and it shapes everything I do in my week and in my life, I'm not touching that planner every day. I'm touching that planner one to two times a week. Then the other planner that I would be touching nearly every day is something from the fun and flexible cal category. So whatever the weekly or daily planner that I'm using that week, that is also a planner that I will touch and check in with every day. And then also my Laurel Denise planner, my content planner, I typically look at about two to three times a week. And it just kind of builds into one cohesive system. Somebody also asked how long it took that me to build this system. And really, it's just an ongoing process. Your planner lineup does not have to be a static thing. Even if you use the same planner for the whole year, how you you use it and how you think about it is always evolving. So this system that I'm in now, I really feel like I spent the whole of last year crafting, but I also know that it will just continue to evolve and I'll tweak things as necessary. And then my mindset around it will also shift over time. So I'm going to flip us tabletop. We're going to look at some more of these planners in closer detail. And I'm also going to answer a few more questions as we go through. All right, now we're going to fly through some of the planners in my fun and functional category. I'm going to start with the daily planner, the one that I plan to use the most, the one that I think of as my kind of main planner in this category is the is the Erin Codron Daily Duo. I absolutely love this. I have the wildflower design from this year. This is actually the wildflower cover as well. I will probably swap out the cover uh, when I start using this in January. You still get all of the same Erin Codron pages that are at the beginning of every planner. This is a six month planner. That's what the duo part of the Daily Duo. And when you purchase this, you do buy both planners at the same time. So this was actually a July start planner. So I had the July to December one is the one that I'm currently using and then this one starts in January. Every month starts with a tab. You get a monthly calendar which I typically do not use and then a notes page and a little mini dashboard here. I've used that sometimes but again I typically do not use any of those pages. What I am here for are the daily pages. You do get every single day in this planner so it's not a shared Saturday Sunday. It is Saturday and Sunday have their own page. The only color in on each page is the line at the top and the little asterisk so it's really easy to use that color as an inspiration or to make this or to just cover that and make this however you want. You have a long hourly schedule starts at 6 a.m. in half an hour increments which I love runs down to seven and then you've got a blank one at the bottom and then space for to-do listing a little section up at the top. It's an Erin Codron planner so of course there is a monthly calendar on every single page and then you have this little blank space at the bottom here which has an asterisk and then it's just free space over here. So that is the same every day and and the days of the week are always on the same side of the page. So it's always Monday on the left-hand side, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 
Sunday, and then a blanked piece of line, and then a blank line notes page. For it, when you get to the end of the month, for example, here's the end of January, you've got 2930, so 31 will actually be the first spread in February to preserve that day on the same side of the week. I've got two other planners here that I want to mention in rotation for the for daily planning and while I do expect mostly to use the daily duo and again this is the a5 size if I didn't already say that I also have the day designer planner which I love this planner I think it's really really gorgeous and neutral the way that the structure on this works is you get some blank space at the top with the date printed all of the printing on this is super super small then you have top three a little what I like to call the D section so it says do dinner dollars don't forget this planner does have a quote every day which I I am not a fan of um, and then you get a really long schedule from five to nine but in hour increments not in half hour increments a long to-do list and a section at the bottom that says notes and daily gratitude so I really like this layout it's very different even though it has like a lot of same components in the Erin Codron one I find this one very different so depending on the mood I'm in or if I don't have a lot of if I want to do like a time blocking thing and I don't have like a lot of short tasks or short appointments because I find the half an hour setup really, really helpful. Um, I can use this one as a schedule. I do actually really, really love the weekend pages in here. The weekend pages in here are different. So it is a Saturday and Sunday split page. And the way that it works is you get today's top three for both days and then adjust the schedule and then it's got a mini overview for next week. I would say like maybe four out of five times I use this planner it's because I want the weekends pages. I just really love this weekend page. If you're a person who needs like the full planner on the weekends this is definitely not the planner for you. I'm not. I usually don't do that much planning on the weekends. Um, so I just really, really love this. And I love the little week at a glance on the bottom in particular. So bringing that in a little bit more this year. And then I also have this from the Daily Grind, which has really cool pages as well. I do have a full overview video of this planner as well. But I'll just show you what the what the daily pages, the individual daily pages look like. And this is a disc bound planner. This planner does have like weekly setup, monthly setup, etc. I can kind of show you what that looks like. So you've got this month ahead it's very bullet journal setup style so like it's one of those planners that is like someone else's bullet journal or preset up bullet journal which is really really cool the paper in this is also really thick and nice you've got some list goals and thoughts blank document and then you've got this weekly thing so it's up at the top here it's got a week in review and at the bottom here it's got a week ahead I especially love this page just like a teensy bit of reflections and a teensy bit of week ahead planning I don't, this page just really resonates with me then you do get a blank doc grid over here and then you get into the daily pages which just have like a banner at the top you've got a top 10 goals this month you can transform that into to do's the checklist says done almost or tomorrow which I really love that as a format for the checklist and then it says too amazing I will feel three top movers for today don't forget grateful and excited for and then it's got space to kind of mark in a little schedule do a little bit of time blocking this is very very structured it's definitely not going to work for me every day but I think it's really fun and on a very specific kind of day I really really like this so I'm hoping to bring this in a bit more to my planner this year to my planning this year as well and those are the main daily planners that I plan to play around with let's dig into the weekly planners and we're going to go by brand here so I have two plum paper planners here one is undated that is this one and this is the dashboard layout this one is actually from last year I used this a couple of times last year not a ton um, and what you get in this one is you get a full page of listing space set up as a dashboard so I just think it's really really cool you've got like a little three list at the bot at the top here then a little space to make a schedule a little lined section a blank box more notes at the bottom and then a big listing space and then on this side you get a one page horizontal weekly layout I like I said before I love dashboards so this is a really fun layout I particularly love this layout paired with a daily planner I don't think this is if I was just using one planner I don't think this would be enough space for me but this makes a really great companion planner because that because of the way I plan right I tend to like start at the year I break it down to the month I start at the month I break it down to the week I start at the week I break it down to the day because that is the way that my brain works like just continuing to section off smaller pieces of time a dashboard layout for weekly is really works well for me whether that's in this planner or throughout this this past year I've used a lot of 
like clip in accessories and dry erase stuff to do that kind of thing because the two main components that I need for the week are like a weekly to-do list and then any time sensitive thing and a place to list out any time sensitive things or appointments. Uh, so this is a really fun layout. I definitely will be bringing it back this year and because it is such a big dashboard space, this is a seven by nine, it is really fun to bring stickers into this. The other plum paper planner that I have for 2024 is, is the vertical priorities and I have this one in the modern color way let's look at the pages I do not like how plum paper handles the split week the week that's in two months so like the week that is the first week of the last week of January first week of February I really I really don't like the way plum paper addresses that but on the in-between weeks I love this layout this this is a really fun layout it is a vertical it is a line vertical layout it also has some different splits on the page you've got these little bullet sections each with three bullets up at the top you've also got this like shaded inbox here Saturday and Sunday are stacked and then this is a pretty wide column it is two inches not 1.5 inches so a standard vertical sticker kit is not going to like fit in here although it is really fun to use stickers in this planner the part of this planner that i love is the actual weekly layout the part of this planner that i do not love is that all the sidebar spaces at the top i find this very difficult to use you just have these blank boxes here here and then a habit tracker here so that is the plum paper layout from erin codron i have two planners in rotation this year the first is a horizontal layout which i've got in the canvas if you want to see more of these one check out my black friday haul but stay tuned because i actually have all of the seven by nine erin codron life planner layouts plus the a5 daily duo and i have all of the coil options and colorways so i'm going to be doing like a big erin codron compare video so stay tuned for that but this is the horizontal layout it is lined and then has a blank space along the side here and i got this in canvas i love to sticker in a horizontal when i don't have a very busy week this is the planner that i grab again this does have a horizontal sidebar which for me a horizontal sidebar is very difficult to to work with but as I said I tend to pick this planner on a less busy week then the other Erin Codron planner that I have is probably my favorite of the Erin Codrons even though I use the Daily Duo more this planner just holds such a magical and special place in my heart and this is the hourly and I do have the inspired colorway here I love how vibrant this colorway is and one thing that I love about the Erin Codron hourly is if you want to use the color you can but if you don't want to use the color it's really easy to pull this out it's literally just the name of the month and then the cover at the top so you can easily cover that with whiteout stickers washi date date covers whatever you want then, then you have a nice long schedule again it runs 6 a.m to 7 p.m but with a blank one at the bottom to make make it go later and it also has just this blank space at the top now which is fantastic you could run this timeline earlier or you could use that for like a little daily priority or reminder i love that that was a new change for this year and i am just absolutely here for it then again erin codron planner so you've got a calendar lined sidebar and two habit trackers at the bottom if you told me Lindsay, you can't be a planner hopper anymore. You need to just pick one weekly or daily planner. I think this is probably what I would choose. Then last up in my collection of weekly planners, I've got a new one to me this year. New planner in a layout I've never tried before, so I'm super excited for this. This is the Moxie Life flagship vertical planner, and I've used a vertical planner before. It's typically not my favorite layout, especially the like three boxes style of the Erin Codron one. This is a lined vertical planner. So that gives you some of the functionality that you get in the hourly planner, but a lot more flexible because there's no hours built in. This planner is beautifully neutral. Still has the 1.5 inch columns that are great for stickering. So I am really excited to try this out for this year. Runs Monday through Sunday. Your sidebar is on the right hand side of the page in the Moxie Life instead of in the left. It is split between listing space and a habit tracker. And then down at the bottom here, you do have a box, but that box is also lined and there's just a teeny tiny compass wheel on each day this used to be a little heart but they decided to change it to the compass wheel to make it a little bit more flexible i can't wait to play around in this layout i am really excited to try this out i will just mention this planner if you're using it as an all-in-one this does have all of the goal setting work and weekly actions pages even when i use this planner though i will still use my quarterly companion notebooks to do my goal setting that way that is all together in one place for the whole year so those are the different weekly and daily planners 
planners that I have, lots of fun different things. Again, I will just be mixing it up and I choose my planner based on the kind of week I'm having. Which makes it really helpful for answering some of these questions. The first question I have here is how do I choose a layout? I'm intrigued with the horizontal, vertical, and dashboard and trying to decide which is for me. So I would think about, I basically run through this every single week when I'm deciding what I wanna plan in for that week. The way I would dive into this is start with, what are the core things that you track in your planner? Is that a schedule? Is that a to-do list? Is that priorities for the day? Think, list out all of the different components that you track and kind of like, it doesn't have to be a perfect ranking, but kind of rank them by order of importance. Then you can start at the top of that list, kind of and work your way down, matching what you want to track to the layout. When you're thinking about the layout, think about how. One thing that I find really, really helpful in this is if you don't own the planner or anything similar, you can draw it, kind of just sketch it out on a notebook or a piece of paper. It does not have to be fancy. You know, if I'm evaluating a vertical planner versus a horizontal planner, just draw out my columns. I like to use sticky notes and say like, okay, I need to put my dinners in my planner every day. So I would literally grab a sticky note, write down dinners and then put where I'm gonna put that in the planner. So in the horizontal planner, that's probably going right here. In the vertical planner, that's going down at the bottom. In the hourly planner, I actually will just tack it right into the 6 p.m. time zone because that is when we put our dinners. Write them all down on to-do list and get as specific as you need to, and then you can kind of just block in where things are gonna go. Again, so I've got my dinner one right here. That is going in that box. I am gonna put my priorities for the day right here with my any appointments that I have running under that and I'm gonna run my to-do list right there so that is the structure but all of a sudden wait I'm having a week or I'm someone who really needs a schedule this is not gonna be the right planner for me but I could grab that vertical which is gonna give me the flexibility and then I could say okay priorities are going right at the top along with the schedule and appointments built right into the schedule running throughout the day my to-do list is gonna go at the bottom and my dinners are gonna go right in that bottom section right there or maybe I need a little bit more to-do listing space, so I'm gonna make a mini schedule for the day and put my to-do list at the top. And I can just move these things around. I also do that with like weekly components, and then I have a better idea of how this is gonna work before I ever put pen to paper. In general, if you are a person who thinks about your day chronologically, a vertical or hourly planner is probably your best bet, whether that's an hourly layout on a daily planner or an hourly layout on a weekly planner it's going to be hard to fit that kind of schedule thinking into a horizontal layout. If you only have like one or two scheduled things per day though, you can totally work that into a horizontal layout. If you are a person that has a ton of weekly to-dos and you're not really sure when you're going to do them, but you like a lot of that weekly space, then a dashboard layout is really going to be helpful for that. If you like to do a lot of journaling or write down full sentences or note taking in your planner, I prefer the horizontal layout for that. So you just have to think about the main things that you're going to be using. In terms of choosing between a weekly and a, and a daily, which the next question I got, which was specifically about Erin Codron, but kind of applies to everything. It was about someone wondering about going weekly layout specifically the horizontal to the daily life planner. If you feel like you're running out of space in your weekly planner, that is when I would say to run out to check out a daily planner. Doesn't need to be every day, but if like multiple times per week you're really running out of to-do listing space or scheduling space in your weekly planner, that's a good sign that you might need something more of a daily. Also, if you feel like your days are lacking structure and you really wanna try and build that in, a daily planner can be really powerful for that. One thing that I love about the daily planner is there's so much space because again, one page per day, even in the A5 size, you can just list out literally everything. I have plenty of days where I will write like every single thing that I'm doing. I will make myself a full schedule even if I've got nothing going on. Like lining that up with a correspondingly long to-do list where I'm getting very, very specific. It's not just reminders. It's not just big things. I'm listing out all of the things that I'm doing. And sometimes that is really helpful. So again, if you think that's something you would like to try out, a daily planner is much easier to do that. It's much easier to do that in a daily planner than it is in a weekly planner, but you can also back off. You can leave blank spaces. You can skip a day in here. 
The other thing that I would say about daily planning is even if this is your main everyday planner, give yourself permission to skip a day or to just use the components where you need. If having blank spaces in your planner is going to really drive you crazy, a daily planner is going to be tough because there is so much space to fill out. There are definitely days where I just use the to-do list in here or I just write like two different things in the schedule and call it and leave it at that. If you really try and fill out every single line in here for every single day, it's probably going to be too much. So that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed seeing my planner lineup for 2024. Let me know some planners that are in your lineup for 2024. Happy plan, miss. Happy planning. Don't forget to come back tomorrow. I'll have another fun planner video. You can also subscribe if you haven't already. And check me out on Instagram and TikTok at MyCraftyPlans for even more planner fun. Bye!